I have John here with me, and John is the father of Zero Trust, and we're definitely going to talk about Zero Trust today. And I want to talk about maybe a different angle. John, if you need to explain to someone that doesn't understand cybersecurity, or maybe to explain to board of directors, how would you explain what is Zero Trust? So I start by explaining the whole internet and our networks are built on a trust model. And that trust model says that uh, users on the inside of our network that we, that we control that network are trusted and the users outside of it are, call, are called untrusted. The internet is untrusted. And I explain just the basic trust model. You have to understand tech, a little bit of technology and understand that this is built into it and say that that is the fundamental problem, right? We have to get rid of that trust model because trust a human emotion that's injected into digital systems for no reason is actually the vulnerability that's exploited by malicious actors. And so uh, if, I, if I start to explain a little, just a little bit about how the network works and the fact that, that we've taken these human emotions and we've anthropomorphized them into digital concepts, that's the failure, right? And so it goes back to uh, the whole trust but verify thing. Because uh, I'm going to ask you to say this, because I know you you know Russian and I don't, right? So remember, R Ronald Reagan said trust but verify, but what did he really say in Russian? Доверяй, но проверяй. Right, and it means the exact opposite, right? The essence of it in Russian is I'm going to be watching you, and yep. so that was the fundamental thing that somebody took that and said we should do trust but verify, and, and trust became this big push trusted users trusted systems trust 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 and it allows you if you're in technology to not do anything because it's trusted i once said to the to a CISO, what's your cybersecurity strategy and he said trust but verify and i said oh i get the trust part that just means you're not going to do anything how about the verify well i don't do any verification because they're trusted users that would be rude and I realized that we'd taken all these human constructs and they weren't fitting into the digital world. There's no such concept of rudeness in, inside of a network, inside of packets, inside of digital systems. So that's what I would tell people. And, and, and I then talk to board members about how Zero Trust is designed to uh, grand strategically meet the needs of the business, to stop data exfiltrations, and successful cyber attacks. And so I give them a strategic model and a vision that they can focus on. And they all get it. They all love it. Um, I, I have more difficulty with people who are engineers, longtime engineers who, who say, well, that's not the way we've always done it. And the answer is yes, it's not the way we've always done it. But of course, the way we've always done it isn't working. So that's been a lot of the reason you're seeing this uh, movement towards zero trust, because it resonates up to the highest level of any organization. Yeah, I think in a greater schema, if board of directors understand this, it's much, in some cases, better. Because I think as an industry, we have a hard time to explain to board of directors why do they need security and why do they need to spend money there. Yeah, absolutely. I talk about how Target is the most important date in the history of cybersecurity. Even though we have these ransom attacks now, Target showed that a CEO can get fired because of something IT does, which is allow a data breach. And so oftentimes CEOs get fired because of data breaches, Target, uh, Equifax, Talk Talk, Ashley Madison, Sony. I'm not sure exactly why uh, the CEOs of, of FireEye and SolarWinds still have their jobs. Uh, they've just been blaming it. people I, that I don't understand, but it's a different, it's a different discussion, I guess. Yeah. John, if I am a company or anybody else a company, what the minimum basic steps they can do to start the journey on a zero trust? And I actually emphasize the journey part because I don't believe it's something you just do once and you're done there. No, I talk about the zero trust journey and there's a five-step model. Define your protect surface. What do you need to protect? Map your transaction flows. How does the system work together? Then you architect it. You put the technology in place. Or, may, or maybe you realize you already have the technology in place. Step four is to create the policy. Zero Trust has always 
ultimately a zero trust policy statement that's enforced in the technology. And step five is monitor and maintain. So it's very simple. So for a company who has a lot of security technology, what they can do is kind of a figure out where they what they need to protect. That's always the first question. I get on calls all the time where people are talking about, do I need to put my widget here or here or what widget do I need? And I'm like, what do you need to protect? If you don't know the answer to that, you will always fail, won't you? Until you know how to protect, in, until you know what you're trying to protect, you can't protect anything. So once we you understand of, that. Yeah, we kind of fell to the basics. You know, what's my assets? What do yeah. I control? What do I have? How do I define my crown jewels? And after that, I can even start phase one, I guess. Right, right. And you can approximate that a lot. So I talk about uh, DAS elements. That's a term you'll hear me say. It's actually in the, uh, it's in the DISA guidance as well. DAS stands for Data Application Asset or Service. So you take a single DAS element, put it into a single protect surface and design outward from there. So you might have an application that you want to protect that you're, say you're a, um, it's your medical records application for, for healthcare and say that's an internal application. Well, now, because I know that application, I'm actually also protecting the PHI data sitting that, that's being used by that, but maybe I don't really have an idea exactly where that PHI data is, but since I know it's being used by the application, I can write a granular layer seven policy about uh, who gets access to that application and really start to protect the data behind it as well. So uh, what I tell people, you know, you don't rip and replace and, and zero trust isn't binary, but what you want to do is if I have uh, a, an application, say an electronic medical records application, and I have um, some kind of technology that I can enforce policy on somewhere in that flow chain, start writing those more granular zero trust rules against it. And then incrementally, you'll just be making things better and better and better. You don't have to get to, you know, nirvana automatically. This is a journey and you do it one step at a time. And if you do something that makes it better today, that's, that's a significant improvement than if you did nothing today to make everything better. John, we have a lot of vendors in the space as I now say they're helping the zero trust. In your opinion, why vendor fail in the zero trust approach? Well, because if you try to productize it and say, if you buy my product, you have zero trust. Now, there are no zero trust products, right? There are products that work well in zero trust or that use a zero trust methodology behind them. But zero trust is a strategy that can consume lots of different products based upon the thing you're protecting. So I can never tell you what products you need what controls you need until I know what the protect surface is. And once I know that, then I will design outward from there. So too many people start at the architectural level, start at the product level, and don't even understand what you're protecting. So if you know what you're protecting, it will reveal itself what you need technologically to protect that DAS element. John, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. I hope people will understand more where to start because it's definitely uh, journeys that people need to do, especially now when we all work from home. Thank you very much. Great catching up with you, man.